In this video, I will provide a little more details about the wall framing. And in order to do that, I'm just going to kind of start out with something that I did as a reference point. And I'm not going to be using it in the this particular video, but uh, I did number the walls. We have number one would be the entire length of the outside. Number two, entire length of the outside on this side. And then I just kind of number 17, the inside view of this. And I just wanted to throw this out there because this is kind of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking each individual wall and uh, taking a look at it. Um, but before I did that, I wanted to give you an idea what the floor plan was going to look like. Um, you can always go back and reference this instead of going to um, watch another video. So this is just a reference for the rooms and the walls if you want to um, fast forward and come back and put it in the beginning so it would be easy to find. Now, before we get started with the wall framing, I just wanted to point out that we do have a couple of bottom plate break points. And uh, you can always move these over. You know, you can see here where we have an anchor bolt. You can eliminate one of the anchor bolts by moving this anchor bolt over here for the wall framing. So don't think you need to stick with my design here. There are ways that you can save a few dollars if you get um, a little creative. So just don't forget that the modifications you make, if you move the anchor bolts, you're going to have to be aware that the plate breaks are going to be different. And that's probably one of the biggest problems with building houses like this is that uh, you go in and you make a modification and then some somebody else comes along you're working with and they don't know about it and then they're like hey what's going on here so make sure that you address those issues as they arrive make a note on the plans whatever so everybody can um, know about it or be familiar with them so break here's the break point here so two individual pieces of lumber we need to have an anchor bolt within 12 inches of this on the exterior walls. Unless the engineer notes otherwise. Just wanted to give you an idea. You might have to cut some of your backing studs. And this is where the wall is going to intersect um, to allow for the anchor bolt. So not going to be a big deal, but uh, just something you're going to need to be aware of. The bathtub is going to be here. The bathtub window framing, give you an idea another backing stud here. This is where the walls are going to be intersecting. The interior walls are going to intersect with the exterior walls. A view of the header here. And keep in mind that the bathtub surround or the walls you're going to build around the bathroom, whether you're going to tile it or buy a one-piece bathtub unit, bathtub and shower unit, where the walls, you're going to need to know what the height of these walls are going to be. So I just frame this one in here. You might need to raise the window up. The header might need to go all the way to the top with no cripples, no jack studs here. And the window might need to be smaller. Or um, the window might need to move up a couple of inches and be smaller. So check your bathtub, the height of your bathtub unit whatever you're going to be. If you're going to tile it, yeah, that, that's different. You can always bring the tile up a little higher if that's what you want. But if you get a one-piece fiberglass or acrylic bathtub unit and uh, it comes up to right here, you are not going to be happy. So that's priority. You're going to have to double check that for this particular window. The front door header here, standard. Um, make sure that your framing plates are at least four feet. And these are building codes that I deal with in Southern California. You might not deal with them in your area. I do not recommend having any framing breaks less than two feet. I mean, when we used to build houses in the late 1970s, I remember them being about six inches or a foot. It didn't matter. Now it's a big deal. They need to make sure they get a solid connection going all the way across the top of the framing plates um, for the um, strength of the building to make them a little stronger. So here we can see the break and then the break over here. Living room window here. And again, you can always change the sizes 
of these windows. Anchor bolts within 12 inches from the each break. Front door, bathroom window from the outside. And again, our wall framing backing. This would be the area that's going to be in bedroom number one. This would be the closet here. Going to have two um, walls intersecting here. Bedroom number one, the window here. And again, you can change that. Just make sure that it, the um, these are fire escapes. And I know this doesn't make sense, but you're going to have to um, familiarize yourself with the building codes. Most building codes require a minimum. And I'm just going to say this 42 inches from the ground to the top of the window. That is from the top of the window frame. So that would be top of the finished floor to the top of the um, part of the window. That would be the um, highest part off of the ground after it was opened. And I believe you need to have windows that are at least have, provide a 20 inch by 20 inch um, opening when the window is opened. But again, you're going to have to check those um, with your local building department. And uh, of course, make sure that I'm right when, on, on everything that I said there. But again, bedroom windows and uh, other windows in your house and other rooms, if they are um, need to be for a fire egress to um, escape in case there's a fire in the house, if this is going to be a fire escape, and uh, this can go up to three stories, I believe, uh, up to a three-story building. A view from inside of bedroom one. Our next wall. Zoom into the plate break again. Remember the bolts on each side, anchor bolts. Breaks at the top, four foot minimum. And if any of this stuff doesn't make sense, leave a question in the comment area and I will answer it as soon as possible. And keep in mind too that the length on this board here needs to be um, longer than four foot also. So wherever there's a break. And you know, if you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, I've got a small board here. Well, just make sure that you use longer lumber. And if a 20 foot uh, piece of lumber is required and you can't find it, um, you're going to have to put a strap on it. And uh, most of the time it requires a four foot strap. It's huge. So you can strap it, not like you have to have to have the plates um, break on that. But with that said, if you do put a strap there, these straps usually interfere with installing the drywall or siding or um, not all the time the stucco but it can prevent the stucco um, from being nailed or stapled properly on the top plates. So keep that in mind. Not a good thing. Get the plate breaks um, if you can. And again, I realize I've mentioned this too many times. That's because it's important for people who aren't really wrapping their mind around um, having a building inspector come out to their house that they're framing and they think everything is right. And then um, the building inspector doesn't pass your framing and you have to somehow get these straps on and it's not going to be an easy thing to do and then the problems of course like i said it creates when you go to install the um, drywall or the exterior covering another thing i want to point out is that i moved this stud over here if you look at the previous um, video that i made you will see that the stud is closer here 16 inches on center we just keep plopping along, it would end up about here. If you leave the stud here, it's going to be difficult, not impossible, just difficult to nail the um, this framing stud to the other wall framing studs to make a nice connection. Top plate is going to overhang here. This one here will come back. You will nail this with at least, um, I would say, 316D nails. And then this bottom plate here from this wall extends forward. Nice view of it here. Another important aspect to building. Now let's take a look at our back wall here. We have a sliding glass door and a kitchen window. Our plumbing 
and then the this is we used to call these ears I have no idea where that came from but we have the little brakes here for the um, framing plates that are going to be coming in from the other walls that are going to intersect into this one here and then we have our bedroom window again the anchor bolts 12 inches away from the brakes all brakes another view of the bottom top plate um, extending past and or I should say meeting with the edge and then the upper top plate uh, back three and a half inches or three and five eighths of an inch this could be another problem just kind of gonna throw out some ideas here yeah, it's better to cut this an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch sometimes shorter you come in here and you uh, try to line the two plates up and your framing plate on the other one is a little bit larger than what you're expecting and then you're going to have to get the saw up here and cut it um, again cut this plate again so that it will um, go all the way to the edge or uh, like most people do oh, it's only off an eighth of an inch and they leave it so that'll leave that up to you whether you're a perfectionist or a super perfectionist um, openings over five foot I should say five foot and over usually require double trimmers keep that in mind I think we have a six foot opening here and uh, the kitchen window single trimmers plumbing and uh, the plumbing is not going to notch we do not want to drill through the king studs here the king stud here or um, I don't think you're allowed to drill through more than two wall framing studs um, that are in a row so we would have two like this on a load bearing wall but I'm not sure I do have another video on that I will put a link here to that you can go check that one out and of course our other break there our channels where the framing walls for the closet will intersect into this wall here bedroom window framing and in my example I have a four by six um, keep in mind that these uh, I'm not providing you with structural engineering information I'm just providing you with information for um, on possible ways to build this you know if you live in areas where you have snow loads um, for example you might need larger headers and then here we have the jack stud or the cripple stud over the break so that we can get uh, nice nailing and the last wall here not going to spend a lot of time on this it's just kind of a simple straightforward 16 inch on center wall no windows in it again our plate breaks our breaks in the framing plates at the bottom and of course 16 inch on center studs and here's an example of the wall framing stud I was talking about on the other side where it's a little close here you know, I'll leave that up to you whether you want to move this one back or leave it here to nail into the um, studs that would be in the other wall here so that's it for this video I will put a link to the next video um, or us usually it's going to be located at the top here of the video and let me know if you can't find it um, and when I say let me know if you can't find it make sure you check out the video description box first and uh, in YouTube and they will um, usually I have a link in there or in the comment area to the other videos also